You get one shot at a first impression, and that is exactly what the first page of your screenplay is. First impressions can be tough. Readers are going to form an opinion based on what they read there. And no matter how many hours you've put into the rest of your script, that's going to impact how they experience it. So obviously, you want to get that first page right. I'm a professional screenwriter, I've read a lot of screenplays, I've written a lot of screenplays, and now I'm even doing a new YouTube series called Spot the Pro with Jason Gruich and Joe Marino on the very subject of first pages. So while there's always more to learn and room to grow, I do have a few first page tricks up my sleeve and I'm gonna share four of those with you today. Up front, I do wanna say these are tips, they're not rules. Your goal with the first page is to get somebody excited to turn to the next page because you've hinted that there might be a viable movie here and they're just completely hooked by your sense of storytelling. If you achieve that, no matter how you achieve that, you have won. These are simply tips to help you get there. I'm going to use the scripts for Die Hard, Little Miss Sunshine, and Get Out to illustrate my points here. They're all really successful movies and really successful scripts. I love all three of them personally, and they represent a wide variety of genres. If you'd like to see the scripts for yourself, they're linked below in the description. And with that, let's get into it. Your first page should have clean, tight, well-written prose. It should be written with like a visual cinematic language and it should take advantage of white space. Any dialogue should be excellent. I hope you can get through page one without any typos, but those things are a given. The first thing I wanna spend time on here is an instantly intriguing opening image. Capture our attention. Die Hard script opens on Christmas lights on a freeway and then we instantly tip up to see the belly of a landing plane. It specifically mentions that the noise is deafening and we have been snapped awake, which is exactly what we want in an action movie, even if the action is several minutes away. In Get Out script, we actually start with a Bible verse about presenting your body as a living sacrifice and renewing your mind to become good and acceptable and perfect. And then we cut to the exterior of a perfect suburban home at night. And then from the outside, through the glass, we watch a quintessential white suburban family eat dinner together. This isn't spectacle and it's not some in-your-face moment, but it's interesting and it's unsettling because it's an entirely different vibe than if we were inside that dining room with them. And juxtaposed with that Bible verse, it really sets the tone. In Little Miss Sunshine, we open on five beauty pageant contestants hearing the results. And importantly, we focus on the breaking hearts of the four losers before we even cut to the winner. That is conflict, it's interesting, and it also suggests a kind of darkly funny tone as the losers are forced to smile through the whole thing while the winner bursts into tears and hugs them. Okay, tip number two, have something actually happen. Give us conflict or give us tension or give us the very real implication that one of those things is coming. For instance, in Die Hard, yeah, that loud jet wakes us up, but it has nothing to do with any of the characters. So we quickly meet John and the guy that he's flying next to who gives us that famous fists with your toes bit. And sure, that is interesting. It's interesting enough that millions of us across multiple generations have tried that very thing as a result of watching that movie. Admit it, you've done it, I know you have. I might be doing it right now, you honestly have no idea. But anyway, it's interesting. But I still wouldn't say that it's the same as something happening. I am gonna cheat just a little bit on this one. In the first two lines on page two of Die Hard, the other man sees John's Beretta sticking out of its holster as John stands up to get his luggage, and then the man blanches. Now, something has happened. It's a small beat here, but it intrigues us just the same, largely because of that man's reaction, and also it implies what's to come. And I am convinced that at one point, these two lines at the top of page two were actually at the bottom of page one because screenwriters care desperately about this stuff. This is a shooting script, which means that it no longer needs to win over directors and actors and producers and executives and financers. You might notice that the movie's title is at the very top of page one, taking up a couple precious lines. I would bet money that the title or something else on that first page was not there in an earlier draft, so I'm gonna give the writers credit for making something happen on page one. But even if I'm wrong, which again, I'm probably not, don't cheat this. Make something happen on page one and rework that first page until you get there. Find that hook that will excite someone to turn to page two. Okay, in Get Out, Andre runs along the sidewalk in front of that perfect suburban house and his music stops. He's annoyed and he even says damn, and that's kind of sort of something happening, but it's not enough. Thankfully though, that perfect suburban house's motion lights come on, spotlighting him for the family inside who instantly becomes uncomfortable. That is something happening. 
Tons of tension right at the bottom of page one. Little Miss Sunshine actually sort of fulfills this part with its first few lines with the results of the pageant being read and the contestants' hearts breaking. But it doesn't stop there. It cuts to Olive watching a pageant on TV, swept up in it and wanting it for herself, even though the script makes it kind of clear that she doesn't look like your typical pageant girl. And then as we watch how much she is into this thing that seems like it could possibly be out of reach for her, we hear the voiceover of her dad saying that there are two types of people in this world, winners and losers. And we have conflict. Something has happened and we are turning to page two. Okay, tip number three, establish a clear and interesting tone. All right, so how does a tone compel somebody to turn to page two? By making the tone clear from page one, you are telling the reader what kind of script this is going to be. You are telling them that you are a confident storyteller who knows what you're doing and that every last word in this thing is intentional. You're allowing your reader to settle in, get comfortable, and just experience the story. Out of the three tips I just outlined, this is the one that I want to implore you not to skip. The script for The Social Network is amazing, but it doesn't really have anything happen on page one. It definitely doesn't open with an instantly intriguing image. What compels us to keep reading is the tone of its excellent dialogue and an interesting question that Mark asks, which we want to hear answered. And that is actually a fourth tip, by the way. If you can put a question in our heads, then we're probably going to turn the page to find the answer. But most importantly, the tone on page one of that script is just as clear as it is in Die Hard or Get Out or Little Miss Sunshine or pretty much any other fantastic script ever. You do not need to give a spectacle or a big genre moment right out of the gate. You can, but you don't have to. But we definitely need to understand the tone because that will inform how we read every single action line and line of dialogue from that point forward. It will inform how we interpret every single scene. Tone teaches the audience how to watch the movie. It sets expectations. And if you don't do this intentionally, readers are going to make assumptions and you will break them and you are going to wind up annoying the very people that you hope to impress. So if your movie is meant to be funny, be funny on page one. And don't just be funny, by the way, be funny in a way that matches the specificity of your tone. If the tone should be more serious or dark, make that clear. If there's a fantastical or surreal element to your world, or at least in the world of your first act, you want to hit that kind of thing super early as well. In Die Hard, we get that deafening jet, which tells us this thing will be intense. And we get the fists with your toes dialogue, which, you know, suggests that it's going to be kind of fun. And then we get a glimpse of John's gun, which tells us to expect action. Great, we know exactly the type of movie that we're getting into. In Get Out, the shot from outside the house at night tells us that this thing will be unsettling or scary. We get an immediate dose of racial tension when the floodlights light up Andre. And the Bible verse also suggests that this is going to be kind of a philosophical movie. We know that we're going to be on the edge of our seats here, but we also know that there's a good chance that this thing is going to challenge us. In Little Miss Sunshine, we know by seeing the contestants on screen and Olive's reaction to them and by hearing her dad's boisterous dialogue that we can expect laughs, maybe a little bit of heartbreak, and some likely over-the-top characters. And now we want to see more of those things. So those are a few of my thoughts on first pages. And if you found some of them useful, then you'll probably find some other things on this channel useful. So, you know, do the thing and hit those like and subscribe buttons and then you'll be able to see more. But definitely go back and look at your first page and ask yourself as honestly as possible if somebody would be compelled to turn to page two. And if you're not sure, then do everything that you can to find that hook. See if you can improve your opening image. See if you can make something happen. See what you can do to make your tone more clear. And maybe see if you can plant a question in your audience's head. Or maybe it'll be something else that provides the hook. Maybe you'll show us a visual that we think represents one thing, and then it turns out to be something else entirely, all in the space of page one. Just like I talked about on the first episode of Spot the Pro. There are a lot of ways to hook a reader, but if you're having trouble doing that, then hopefully one of these tips helps you. Thanks so much for watching everybody, and all the best with your own writing.